Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of September 2020 on Inventory Counts in SAP Business One. We are going to cover Inventory Cycle Setup, Cycle Count Determination, Alerts, Counting Scenarios, Inventory Count, Printing Count Sheets, and Inventory Posting. Let's get started. Inventory counting or stock taking is crucial to any company that manages an inventory, be it perpetual or periodic inventory systems. By matching the actual inventory to the quantity saved in the database, companies can make adjustments to existing inventory records, detect unusual or unacceptable discrepancies, and improve inventory management. Companies take various approaches to ensure that the accuracy of inventory counting results. Typically, it is overwhelming to count all of the items at the same time, so you want to set up a manageable schedule to count a portion of these items at a time, and over time, you will achieve a physical inventory count of all items. SAP Business One offers an end-to-end -end inventory counting process to help improve inventory accuracy. It allows the warehouse manager to determine the frequency of stock counts based on cycle count determinations. For example, a decision might be made to count all high-value A items monthly, all lower-value B items every quarter, and all lowest-values C items once a year. Using Inventory Cycles Setup screen, the warehouse manager can determine the frequency of cycle counts. In order to set up these inventory cycles, we will navigate to Main Menu, Administration, Setup, Inventory, Inventory Cycles. These cycles can help you track inventory counts by issuing an alert each time a count is due. The first cycle code we have in the system is annually with a recurrence of once a year, every year. We have it to repeat on August 26 at 8 o'clock in the morning with no end date. Next, we have monthly, which will be a recurrence every month. Here we have on the first Friday of said month with no specific end date. Next, we have quarterly, which is reoccurrence every three months, dated on the 26th of said month with no specific end date. Lastly, we have our weekly, which will be every four weeks on a Friday with no end date. Now that we have structured our inventory cycles, let's do the same thing for cycle count determination. We'll navigate to Administration, Setup, Inventory, choose Cycle Count Determination. We must choose whether we want the warehouse to be cycle counted by item group or by a certain warehouse sublevel. Currently, we have all by item groups. As bin warehouse is bin enabled, we are also able to instead choose a sublevel if we so wish. Now that we have determined that each warehouse will be cycled by item groups, we will double click on the row number for each warehouse and we are now able to select under each item group what cycle code it should have. For items, we will have monthly. Changing or removing the cycle code defined in this item group affects only new items. Do you also want to change the inventory cycle code for all existing items in this group? In this case, we will say yes. For JB printers, we we'll also choose monthly as it is a high value item and we'll also choose yes. Note that the alerts checkbox becomes available for selection. From a drop down list of users, we are able to select a user who will be receiving the cycle count alert per item group if you so choose. Here we have John Peterson and for JB printers, we'll leave it with Jason Butler. We will go ahead and set up also the remaining item groups. Now that we have chosen the appropriate item groups, cycle codes, alerts being checked, and the users that will be receiving such alerts, we will go ahead and click update to save the information. 
We are back to our cycle count determination setup. We'll click update to also again save the information. Click OK. Now that we have set up our inventory cycles in our cycle count determination, we will navigate to main menu. We will choose the inventory module, item master data. We're going to enter an item master that we're able to take a look in the inventory data. We are able to review and change, if needed, the cycle code from monthly to another cycle code that we have already previously created. Also, we are able to verify the next count date for this particular item warehouse combination. Here we have warehouse number one, which is the general warehouse. It will be every month on the 8th of said month, and the alerts will appear in the messages and alerts window and will be listed as stock taking required. Within the alerts window, you can select an item or items by the item number that you wish to have counted. Simply check the box on the left side, showing as selected, and then click on inventory counting. This will take us to our inventory counting sheet directly. To assist with inventory accuracy, SAP Business One provides you the option of one or two stock counters in the same area. This allows a double check of stock accuracy. By simply clicking the drop down menu, you can select to have one or multiple counters. If multiple counters, we're going to go ahead and say the number of individuals that are going to be doing the count. By clicking the ellipses, we are now able to see a list of users to choose from. Today, we're going to get the help from John Peterson from Logistics. We'll click Choose, Update, and click OK. You might have noticed that there are now a secondary count column, one from Jason Butler and one for John Peterson. If you're satisfied with the inventory counting sheet, you're able to add any remarks at the bottom left corner. And prior to adding, we're going to choose freeze for the three items we're going to count. This provides the ability to freeze the items being counted during the inventory taking process. Freezing an item will prevent all transactions except inventory posting that affects the in-warehouse quantity of the item in the selected warehouse and bin if applicable. We're going to go ahead and add the inventory counting sheet to the system. We're going to go back to our last data record. And here we have the added inventory counting sheet to our system. Next, we're going to take a look at how to print the inventory counting sheets. From the inventory counting sheet, we're going to go ahead and click on preview. And here we're giving two options. One to show or hide the inventory quantities on the sheet itself. Secondly, we are able to print one document for both counters or print per counter. We'll show you both ways. First, we're going to show the inventory quantity in the document and print only one document. Here we have the inventory counting sheet for both Jason Butler and John Peterson. We are showing the inventory information and they have two columns to fill in. Differently, by clicking again on preview, we're gonna go ahead and click on print per counter and we'll see that we have now two pages, one per counter. Again, we're showing the inventory quantities they would be able to provide their counted quantities, one for John Peterson and one from Jason Butler. If you would not like to show the inventory information for the counters, all you need to do is click on Hide in Warehouse Quantities and click OK. Here we'll see now that at this point, they must include their counted quantities per line item not knowing the current inventory information in the database.
Now that both counters have come back and we have their account information on the inventory counting sheet, we are able to verify that the max variance here shown is the absolute value of the variances, not the total of the column. Therefore, we have a total variance of four units. At this point, we're going to update the information by clicking Update. Next, we're going to go and copy to Inventory Posting. At this point, the system will ask you if you want the items with no counters difference, Jason Butler's count, or John Peterson's count. We'll take ahead John Peterson's count. We have the variance values in terms of percentages related to the overall quantity that originated in the counting sheet. We also have the total value of the inventory count discrepancy. We are able to add any remarks if you like. In order to post the inventory count, we're going to go ahead and choose Add. As some of these are related to batches or serial numbers, we must tell the system exactly which ones we have in our system. If we have new items, what serialized numbers or batches those are or batches and serial numbers perhaps that are no longer in our inventory found throughout the count. For our B10,000 item number, printer label, we will then select the batches. We will move to the left column, which will be our available batches, allowing the system to tell us that we have two batch quantities that we need to correct. We must find the batch that we will make the correction from. And at this point, we're going to select two batch quantities, where it will also move to the batch difference on the right side of the screen. Now that we have selected the batch quantity needed, we will go ahead and update and click OK. Returning to the inventory posting, we'll click Add. Our next item is S10,000 server point 10,000. And here again, we must select the serial numbers on the right side, send them to the side of the available serial numbers on the left side of the screen. Once selected, we will then make sure to click and send these items to the available serial numbers on the left side of the screen. As we can see, there's still one quantity that we need to bring in to our inventory warehouse. At this point, we're going to click on Create, and we will enter the serial number details on the Manufactured Serial Number field and Serial Number. And the same for the serial number information. I'll do a right-click, Copy, and right-click, Paste. We will then update the information to save said serial number. We'll click OK to go back to our main screen, and we'll update the information. We'll click Add one more time. You cannot change this document after you have added. We will continue. Enter Yes. And the inventory count posting has taken place. Now that we have done our inventory count posting, we are able to come back to our inventory counting sheet, click on Refresh, and you will see that the line items have been grayed out and the inventory counting sheet itself has changed the status from open to now closed. As we take a look at other inventory counting scenarios, we will navigate to Main Menu, Inventory, Inventory Transactions, we'll select Cycle Count Recommendations. As we mentioned before, Monthly, we would like to take a look at the inventory information related to our high value A items. Annually, we would do our low values C items. That being the case, we are able to select the cycle code for monthly. We are also able to select a range of items if we so desire. We are also able to specify an item group if desired and then the specific warehouse where the cycle count would take place. If the particular warehouse is being enabled, we are also able to go into further details related to sublevels. 
By clicking OK, it will generate the Cycle Count Recommendations report to review the recommended counts for today and initiate inventory counting for the relevant items. In order to do so, we'll select the appropriate items that we want to count, click on Inventory Counting. This will take our selected items to our inventory counting sheet. And here the process starts again related to informing how many users we want to count, adding the document to the system, and lastly posting such counts. Tip of the day, change the font and font size of your display. To personalize your session, change the font and font size to accommodate your needs while saving it for next time you log in, in three easy steps. First, click on My Personal Settings. Then select Display tab and choose the font and font size you like. Lastly, click Update to save the selection you made. Just remember, User Setup Form applies to a specific user making such changes. While in general settings, changes will apply to the whole company. Be careful. Changes in user defaults will influence these assigned users. Cycle counting and posting is just one example of how you can better utilize SAP Business One to help you perform your daily workflows more efficiently and easily. Join us as we help you learn more about SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications bell so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales-related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.